Cashmere moves to his camp, kind of becomes friends with those guys. And you fight on Extreme Challenge 64. It's October 15th, 2005. Now, you beat Josh in the second round, but, man, there, there's certain times in fights where guys experience some refereeing that might be a little <laughs> suspect and how they handle receiving the information tells you a lot about it, about, about who they are as a fighter. So why don't you bring us through what you perceive happened and then we'll kind of talk about what we saw later on. So near fights, one of the better fights I had, especially for, I was still, I just moved to Minnesota. and was really for the first time learning really solid technique. Um, and so actually when I, when I went down to fight near a couple of my teammates, I'm sort of like, dude, he's going to get his ass kicked. Um, for whatever reason, near just lined up as a perfect fight. I beat the dog shit out of near. Just, it, it was it, very one-sided. It was from post to post. Just, just one of those fights where everything was clicking for me and it wasn't for him. Um, and so at one point, uh, Matt Hughes is refing, which is bizarre because he's near his teammate. Uh, but Hughes is refing and he stands me up out of a, uh, a dominant position. I, it might even be a mount. It was some. It was a dominant position. <laughs> I was doing damage. It, and it, Brian was... Garrity, my, Brian Garrity's it... cornering me, and he loses his fucking mind. <laughs> he's he's calling Matt Hughes every every name of the book. He says, "I don't care who you think you're. I'll come in that cage and slap that you know the taste out of your mouth right now." <laughs> and he was serious, man. He lost his mind, rightfully so. But yeah. it was, but frankly, it pumped it pumped me up. And, and if anything, when your cornerman's sticking up for you, you don't have to, right? And so. The fact and that's that Brian, his job. Yeah. Brian was Brian was yelling and you know lost his shit on Matt Hughes, which means I didn't have to say anything because I had my corner man doing that. So it was yeah. it was super helpful to have him there. So so Nick, he's got near on his back, and he's literally just like throwing near's legs to one side or the other and just nailing a pop, pop, pop. You know, and just it was so dominant to where Hughes received instruction from Spencer Fisher, who was cornering near, to stand the fight up. And <laughs> Hughes kind of goes like this and stands it up. And it, it was like a super active top position wow. for Nick. And Nick, rather than like protest or kind of complain, he just, okay, he got up, took him down to the corner. Like you didn't even hesitate, which was very <laughs> surprising, you know, for me watching it later on. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, I think part of that comes from growing up wrestling, you know, like wrestling in high school, wrestling in college, and you're going to get bad calls here and there. And so, I don't know, I, I don't ever recall a bad call phasing me. And also, like I said, this was right after the 170-pound tournament. It's, it's really the first time in my career where I feel like I have control. And so, I, mm. uh, you could have put near wherever you want. I just wasn't yeah. worried about so, it at that point. So, when they announced, they first announced, announced Nick Thompson of the cage, you know, fantastic stand-up, solid wrestler. You know, they're, they're, they're doing all the stats. And then with Josh Neer, it's, and here's a man that needs one more win before he goes to the UFC. You know, the whole crowd goes berserk, and it's Josh <laughs> Neer. What I, what I like about that, so after I won that, like Mike was saying, Neer, the whole idea was Neer had just been in the UFC. He was going to take this fight and then get back in the UFC, right? Yeah. <laughs> so then when I win it, you know, I'm at, at this point, 6-0 or 7-0 or whatever it was at 170. I hadn't lost at 170. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like, hey, man, that means I go to the UFC. And so I, I post every day on MMA.tv about <laughs> getting to the UFC, including, hey, has anybody seen Joe Silva? I want to make sure he's okay because he hasn't called me. I'm getting kind of worried about him. <laughs> every day for like a month.